Hello, good morning everyone. I am Dr. Vivek Agrawal, consultant neurosurgeon at Sir HN Reliance Foundation Hospital, Mumbai. Today on occasion of World Brain Tumor Day, I am here to celebrate and tell you something about brain tumor, to create awareness about brain tumor. So in India, the incidence of a brain tumor is approximately 5 to 10 cases per 1 lakh population. So if you see, uh, overall prevalence of disease is not very high. But recently it has been seen that incidence of brain tumor is increasing fastly. So creating awareness about disease is very, very crucial. Reason being once brain tumor happened to anyone, it can cause devastating damage to his function and risk to his life as well if it is not diagnosed in early phase of the disease. If it is detected in early phase of the disease, it can be treated and majority of the patient can be cured as well. But if not treated, it can cause damage not only to the person, but to the whole family. So what is brain tumor? Brain tumor is any abnormal growth, uncontrolled growth of cells inside the brain. Basically, brain tumor is of two types. One is the primary brain tumor. So these primary brain tumor arise from brain's own cell. So the cells which are lying inside the brain, the tumor arise from the brain's own cell and the secondary brain tumor. Secondary brain tumors are the tumor which grow in some different part of the body like in like a breast cancer, like a lung cancer or any other cancer. And then it's it spread to brain through blood or through other means. Now, primary brain tumors are also of two varieties. One is benign primary brain tumor. These primary brain tumors are very, very slow growing tumor over years and then it causes gradual problems to the patients. And the second one is malignant or cancerous primary brain tumors. So cancerous or malignant primary brain tumors have a tendency that it grow, it divides very fast, it grows very fast, it infiltrates inside the brain rapidly. So it causes uh, fast damage to the patient. Now we'll talk about uh, symptoms and that is how we can detect, we can have suspicion that one is suffering from brain tumor. So symptoms of brain tumor actually depends on type of brain tumor and location of brain which is involved. But one of the commonest symptoms of brain tumor is headache. But headache is actually a very, very non-specific symptom. Many of people, they come, they get headache. And this headache can be because of migraine, sinusitis, or so many reasons for headache can be. But when headache is because of brain tumor, it has certain specific characteristics. Like when the headache is because of brain tumor, it disturbs the sleep of the patient. They get up early in morning because of headache. So it disturbs the sleep and patient get up early before their usual time is something which is a characteristic of brain tumor headache. Second thing that these headaches are usually associated with vomiting and it lasts for many hours or a few days altogether. This headache doesn't respond to usual painkillers and it has a positional variation as well. So tumor related headache is more in lying down position it is supposed to that in lying down position, it causes more swelling in the brain. So it causes more headache. In sitting or in standing position, they feel little better. So headache, which is a very, very non-specific symptom, should not be taken. If like a one get headache, doesn't mean that he has brain tumor. Should not be afraid like that. But if a patient, suppose he's having chronic headache and his headache, headache pattern is changing, his intensity of headache is changing, frequency is changing, then those cases should be investigated because in those cases it can be because of brain tumor or because of any other reason. A brain tumor ha in left part of the brain, suppose if person having tumor on the left side of the brain, he will have a problem like a uh, problem in understanding, problem in speaking, and he will develop weakness and paralysis on right side. So brain has cross connection. If he has tumor on the right side, he will have more problem on left side. If tumor is on left side, he will have a problem on right side. Similarly, so if the tumor is on right side of the brain, he will develop paralysis on left side. Or if tumor is in posterior part of the brain, which is called occipital lobe of the brain, which is responsible for vision, then patient will have a vision problem. Similarly, if the tumor is in cerebellum, 
which is just above our neck that part of the brain it controls our walking our coordination so if tumor happen in that area patient will have walking difficulty imbalance on walking and so on now the primary benign tumor if it is a benign primary tumor as i told that these benign tumor they grow very slowly over a period of time it doesn't happen all of sudden so the symptoms in these cases are very mild and since many years so they will get like mild headache sometime they will have a, a seizure attacks and as time the tumor will grow it may cause significant symptoms as well like paralysis like vision loss like uh, hearing problems and so on on the contrary when it is a cancerous tumor which grow very fast those patient will give a history of a very short duration it can be like a few months or in a year time they will have a rapid symptoms in form of severe headache fit attacks loss of consciousness and if the tumor is not taken care of it can result in risk to patient's life as well now next thing is that the majority we come across a common question what is cause of brain tumor and what are the risk factor for brain tumor so as such there is no clear cause of brain tumor if you ask me one sentence then there is no clear etiology of brain tumor but it has been seen that high doses of radiation exposure to certain chemicals like pesticide vinyl chloride and very very rare cases brain tumor has a hereditary tendency as well but as such there is no one to one causal and uh, uh, risk relationship between tumor or any other factor some of the tumors are common in younger childhood in younger age like infratentorial tumor medulloblastomas some tumors like supratentorial tumors are common in adult patients meningiomas are common in females while astrocytomas are common in male patients one of the common myth is that brain tumor can be because of mobile phone exposure though excessive use of mobile phone is associated with a lot of disadvantages but studies has already proved that electromagnetic radiation because of my mobile phone doesn't cause uh, increased risks to brain tumor so many of the tumors uh, we do screening tests like in cases of cervical cancer in cases of breast cancer lung cancer in targeted population we do certain investigation to find out disease in early stage so that we can treat the disease in early stage and give a good result to the patient but this is not applicable in brain tumors because overall prevalence of disease is not that much that doing these screening tests doing mri screening for a general population so it is not that productive to perform a screening test not in general population not even in family so if a person gets a, a brain tumor doesn't mean that the whole family should do screening of uh, their own brain to find out the tumor because many of the patients and their relative they come to us and that they ask that uh, my mother or my brother has got tumor should we go for doing a mri to check whether uh, we also because everyone gets headache and then they get frightened that they also having a, a brain tumor so it creates only fear and phobia we should not do mri in family or in general population for a screening brain tumor now i will discuss about the treatment of brain tumor so major treatment of brain tumor is surgery sometime we need a uh, chemotherapy and radiation therapy especially in cancer tumor the neuro surgery in brain tumor that is called micro neurosurgery is improved significantly in last couple of decades we perform all the surgery with the help of microscope with the endoscope it gives us clear visualization so that we can dissect out the tumor from brain with preservation of neurons and blood vessel and that gives a fantastic results so result of this surgery depends on on location of brain tumor and type of brain tumor so if tumor is superficially located in brain it is in non eloquent part of the brain non eloquent part of the uh, eloquent part of the brain is part of brain which is uh, associated with major functions like speaking like movements and so and on 
if it is in non eloquent part of the brain in superficial part of the brain and tumor is benign surgery has very good outcome and majority of time it is curative so you, we take out whole tumor and it doesn't comes back again but if tumor is in eloquent part of the brain those cases are challenging and then we apply special techniques to manage these tumors like awake craniotomy so if patient is having tumor in speech area part of the brain which controls our speech and the tumor is lying there then we do awake craniotomy and in this technique what we do we operate patient in awake state so the patient is completely awake we perform craniotomy and excise the tumor while evaluating patient speech so what neuropsych our neuropsychologist will continue continuously evaluate patient speech whether patient is developing any speech deficit or not at any point of time while excising tumor if patient is getting slurring of speech or any problem in speech we stop our surgery or modify our surgery but all the patients are not cooperating for uh, uh, awake craniotomy so in those cases we use intraoperative neuromonitoring so we have here in our uh, hospital in sir h and reliance foundation hospital all these techniques to manage brain tumors so we use intraoperative neuromonitoring as well so in these cases where the patients are not cooperating for awake craniotomy we we use intraoperative neuromonitoring wherein uh, we check the patient's function in unconscious state as well and the moments we are getting any signal that the neuro function is deteriorating we stop doing excision of tumor apart from that other advancement in uh, excision of tumor is neuronavigation and stereotaxy Neuronavigation and stereotaxy is similar to GPS system, so it helps us to reach into deeper part of the brain. Like if we don't know any address and we fix up the address on GPS, it helps us to reach that to that address. Similarly, in neuronavigation, we fix up the tumor on imaging, and then it helps us to reach to that tumor without damaging nearby structure in brain. In certain cases of brain tumor, when tumor is small. like 2.5 cm or less than that we use radio surgery occasionally as well so what is radio surgery it is not a actually a open surgery where we use scalpel it is a high dose of radiation we give to tumor area precisely to tumor area and that radiation should not go to nearby brain area so what does it, this high dose of radiation does and this radiation is given under image guidance so we map out the tumor on mri and that area we give radiation with help of uh, uh, our image guidance so this high dose of radiation it causes damage to tumor so tumor loses its potential to grow they develop necrosis and eventually they die if tumor is detected in early phase of the disease even cancerous tumor when they are localized it can be cured with surgery or at least we can give them a a good disease free survival life so with that if a person gets brain tumor he won't be having good life or he won't survive is wrong with multidisciplinary approach with advancement in neurosurgery with help of patients with help of relative we can fight with the disease and we can get very good success rate so together we are stronger and this year the theme of brain tumor day is you are protected and stay away from stress so stress in some way directly or indirectly it is associated with the brain tumor because once person comes under stress it cause increased level of stress hormones it decreases the immunity of person that increase the risk of brain tumor indirectly they get into addiction and smoking alcohol that cause tumor formation in other part of the body and that can spread to brain so staying away from stress is very important for healthy brain so we should be doing regular exercises we should be doing uh jogging yoga cycling some form of de stressing exercises to keep ourselves healthy with this i will stop my awareness program thank you for being with me thanks